Okay, thanks, Steve. Um, I'm going to start off and then hand over to, to Josie, who actually does most of the work on community of communities these days. Okay, um, this is the 2013-2014 um, annual cycle, sort of the conclusion of the annual cycle. So our annual cycle, most of you will be familiar with. So we're at the annual forum, and after this um, forum, you will receive the sort of aggregated national report on which this presentation is based. Obviously, there's a, a huge amount of information in there which collects uh, data, both um, sort of numerical data, the scores that, that uh, are put next to your sort of self and peer reviews, but, uh, but also importantly, the qualitative data, the comments and the feedback and the thinking. Uh, that has gone on. Um, and so we can only present a small part of that, uh, obviously, at the annual forum. Um, and uh, as I say, then we start the process all over again. Some of you are actually looking at the standards. That, that we are um, doing a consultation period on the standards at the moment. So if you haven't commented, please do so. Okay, so in the last year, which starts sort of April the 1st, our cycles start on April the 1st and finish... Um, on March the 31st, obviously. And uh, this last year, we had an increase in members. We have 89 members. And once again, the increase um, in numbers have come within the children and young people's uh, therapeutic community world. There is a growing understanding, I think, within the children and young people sector that um, therapeutic community approach uh, in um, children's homes is an important and valuable process, and more and more are joining and, and you know, utilising the quality improvement uh, tools and the workshops that, that, that we've been presenting this year to improve their practice as therapeutic communities. As you can see, um, we've been collecting data. So at the beginning of the, the self-review workbooks, we ask you all to uh, provide us with contextual data, service data, things about your communities that we don't capture in terms of the standards. And there's a range of measures, a range of things that we collect, but one of which is whether you're residential or not. And it can, it's quite clear that um, the majority of our members uh, remain residential therapeutic communities with small numbers of five-day um, three-day, two-day, and one-day services. So some of the service data we collect, uh, this contextual data I'm going to focus on, and then I'm going to hand over to Josie to sort of talk about the, the meat, really, in relation to the, to the standards. But this service data um, we've been collecting for quite some time, um, with sort of mixed degrees of success, largely. But this data relates to um, specific issues around staff and client, uh, issues that you measure anyway, so stuff that we're not asking you, hopefully not asking you to collect twice, things around people premature leaving, staff sickness and, and, and such like. And this year we, um, we reported it for the first time in the annual report uh, from last cycle. Um, and this year we encouraged people to submit that data and, and put much more emphasis on it. And 78% of communities completed that data this year, which is fantastic. And we've done um, a job on aggregating those, um, those results. So the results, this is a sort of selection of those results. Um, so on average, the number of referrals to therapeutic communities across our network are 92 referrals. And this is between 1st of April 2012 and 31st of March 2013. So we can only ever sort of uh, collect data a year, a year behind, if you like. Um, so 86 referrals into therapeutic communities for children and young people through to three in addiction communities. Um, so, and the average number of admitted, which suggests something about the meaningfulness of this data, given that the average number of admitted are 15 across the network with 43. So, if you're with three referrals and 43 admissions, they're doing pretty well in the addiction services. So, we do need to do something about thinking about how this data is collected, what people are collecting, the accuracy of, of the reporting. But um, I think what you can see is for 50, on average, um, the community communities, the services were, were uh, admitting 15 um, client members over the year. Um, and the average number of people leaving prematurely were five. Um, and then obviously we collect something about staff, staff data. So uh, one of the interesting facts we collected was that the average length of time a, a member of staff spends in a therapeutic community is, is six years. 
Um, and that ranged from around three years in mental health communities up to 14 years in a national health service community. I mean, that suggests that people like working in NHS TCs. Um, and the recorded sick days as well, we recorded that on average there are 55 days per year um, in therapeutic communities in terms of, of, of sickness. So, so what? So what does that mean? We collect this data because what we want to do is to provide an overall view of therapeutic communities, a, sort of a national picture, if you like. And we believe that, you know, if you, th if you look at the referral rates, that, that, um, that this demonstrates continued relevance of therapeutic communities and a demand for therapeutic community places across all sectors. Um, it also provides a baseline for measuring the effects of quality improvement initiatives. So, for instance, um, if you improve against the core standards and become more like a therapeutic community, does that affect your premature leaving? Does that affect your sickness rates? Does that affect the number of staff, uh, staff turnover, that sort of thing? And also it provides a baseline for research effectiveness. You'll be hearing... Um, albeit in a very different setting from the president of the uh, TCTC research group who um, is uh, inspiring uh, lots of new and, um, and innovative um, research into therapeutic communities and we hope that we can provide some of the evidence for that work that, that goes on there. And we think that we could perhaps provide collective data for promoting TCs, that we could sort of use this data as a way of saying therapy communities are still relevant. I mean, the name of this, I've just remembered the thing that I wanted to talk to Steve about, which was the name of this conference, which is TCs, it's obvious, isn't it? And the reason for that title is that... Um, there, sort of, there is a kind of waning sometimes of interest, wondering what the relevance of therapeutic communities are. Are they still relevant? And I think we can quite categorically say that they, that they are, and people are still interested in referring to them. Um, and it's a starting point. It's a starting point for, for further analysis. And one of the biggest issues, of course, is accuracy. Um, and, and relevance. So is this data that we're collecting uh, useful? <coughs> what would be more useful? We would really like to hear from you. TCTC Research Group is something that we want them to look at this information, to um, perhaps help us to, to look at whether or not it's something that we can improve, um, how we can improve it, and perhaps what should we be collecting, and how can we um, measure its effectiveness. It's not important to know how many sick days a therapeutic community has over a year if we don't know how many staff. So it's about kind of measuring the ratio, percentage of staff per community, etc. So, you know, it's about uh, how, we, how we go about using this. We also want 100% of TCs to complete this data. We are a community of communities. You know, collectively, we provide whatever evidence is required for therapeutic communities and, and, and um, enable uh, TCTC. The, you know, the chair is up there in the corner, Kevin Gallagher. Please speak to him about the importance of, um, of recognising the, the importance of therapeutic communities in today's modern world. So we want the data collection to be more sensitive and we want to more confidently measure and report the trends and to use the aggregated data uh, more and work with TCTC Research Group to, 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 to do that. So what else have we been doing? Well, I'm going to hand over to um, the person who does most of the work on therapy communities these days, along with Natalie and Salima, who are still up on the desk waiting for, for late arrivals. And I'm going to hand over to Josie Thorne. Thank you very much. Hi everybody and thank you Sarah and thank you all for coming. It's so nice to see so many of you here today. Um, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about what we've been doing over the last year and how you've all been involved with the community of communities and then also a bit about the standards and how you've been working um, towards meeting the standards and then think a little bit about the developments for the next um, cycle coming. So... If I just talk a little bit about the events we've had over the last year, we had a, a really successful art competition. We had lots of entries to that, so thank you for, to all of those of you who um, submitted entries. You can see a select um, few here, and, and we've been using some of those entries on the uh, paperwork we've, we've um, created this year. Um, so we'll be running that again this, this cycle, so if you'd like to all start getting your paintbrushes out, and um, we'll be looking forward to receiving them. 
Um, we also hosted some peer reviewer and lead reviewer training. We had lots of people attending that, and again, we'd like to, to rerun them this year and really try and encourage more people to attend the, the training sessions, as we'd really like to get more people trained on, on peer review days. Um, we also ran three workshops, um, which again were well attended, and um, they were looking at some of the core um, struggles that TCs within the network have, and hopefully, um, if any of you came, you found them useful. Um, we ran one on an introduction to group work, which we'll actually be rerunning again this year as it was um, found to be useful. Um, okay, so um, we this year used the seventh edition of the standards. Now this was um, two years in, the, in development really. So um, we went through a process of amalgamating all the standards from across all the different networks, so from adult communities, children's, learning disabilities, and um, reduced the standards from, from a total of 693 um, to 124 for the sixth edition, and then reduced it even further to 107 for the seventh edition. Um, so they're the standards that you've all collectively been working with this, this cycle. And the reason for this um, reduction was, was really a result of your feedback and actually saying the standards are too cumbersome, there are too many, it's, it's not workable, and there are many which are quite repetitive. So the process really was to try and make them clearer and also um, try and make them sort of fewer as well. Um, but it's worth remembering that although we've made this um, uh, addition and, and joined the standards together, the fundamental concept of the standards really um, is the same across the networks and for all TCs, and the values of the standards are, are the same. So if we have a little look at just the core standards I've pulled out, um, and to see how the network as a whole has, has done against these core standards, um, you can see overall, these are the, the 10 core standards that um, on the whole people are, are really performing well against the core standards um, above sort of 60% on all of them. And I'll just pull out a few of them, um, which people have been doing very well against, and that's um, CS2, which is about awareness of the expectations of community membership. So people are um, very aware of, of what it is to be a member of a TC, and that's sort of really integral to, to the TC working. Um, uh, also, uh, people meet the standard about informing relationships with the environment, so about um, people working together to, to help keep a clean, tidy environment, and also building a relationship with one another, so spending that time to get to know one another. And then the third standard I pulled out, which people are doing very well on, is treating everything as a learning opportunity. So this is good to see that TCs are really good at this and they do really focus on, on that aspect. Um, things which uh, people struggle with a bit more is um, the first standard, which is about leadership and having leadership which specifically functions in a way that is... Um, focused on the TC and, and people, and it's a sort of democratic process where um, people can help make decisions. So that's an area where communities may want to, to work on this cycle. Um, and then the other two I've pulled out are about um, involvement in setting and maintaining community boundaries. So um, I think maybe part of the struggle with this one is the maintaining of those community boundaries and um, ensuring that people, people do do that. Um, and then the other one was about being involved in each other's development. Um, and this can be a struggle for some communities. So to sort of break that down and give you a, a better picture of what that looks like, we've divided <coughs> it into the different sectors. So you've got CYP, which is children and young people, mental health, uh, prison communities and then NHS communities. Um, so if we look at that, um, the ones where people are doing well, you can see that NHS communities and mental health communities are doing very well in terms of the expectations. And then the majority of people are doing quite well on um, forming relationships. And sort of average over 80% in terms of treating everything as a learning opportunity. Um, when we then look at the ones where they're struggling, it's, it's a bit more 
varied. So you can see here that actually NHS communities perform really well in terms of the standard about leadership, whereas the other three sectors struggle a little bit. So maybe this is an area of shared learning, and so when we have mixed peer review teams to be sharing those kind of ideas with each other. And then for setting and maintaining community boundaries, you can see the mental health community struggle a little bit more with this one. Um, and then equally for involving people in each other's development, um, mental health communities again struggle as, as well as children and young people's communities. So I think it's, it's also worth mentioning here about the standards and trying to ensure that they reflect um, the communities they, they are in and um, the actual client population and how that standard can work with the client population. <coughs> so that's just an overview of the standards. If we then look at just the core standards over the last three cycles, um, we're a bit wary of doing any direct comparisons as the standards have changed. But if you look at um, the core standards over the last three cycles, you can see that they are um, pretty much keeping at the same level of just over 80% um, over the three years. So that's good. There is consistency in um, the high performance of TCs against the core standards, which is really good. Oops. Okay, so um, we've also collected feedback over this um, cycle again. And overall, um, people have found that peer review days are a very positive experience and they do enjoy them and they take, enjoy taking part in them. Um, and... Um, most communities feel they learn something new, but this isn't as high as it, we would like it to be. So um, we're looking at some of your feedback, and I, some of the um, feedback we've had is about not having enough time for discussions and um, not having enough time to look at all of the standards. So that's something we'd like to review in terms of thinking about the methods and ensuring that people do really get something out of it and learn something from these visits. Um, the other area which people aren't... Um, as positive about is about completing the self-review workbook and I know this has been an ongoing issue and um, we are reviewing the standards again this year to hopefully reduce them a bit more and to make um, them a bit clearer so that they are more easy, easy to work with. Um, we're also trying to create a more user-friendly workbook so hopefully that sort of process will make, make it a bit easier to, to complete electronically. Um, so I think I've just mentioned a few of these, but thinking about the developments for the next cycle, um, as I said, and Sarah said earlier, we are in the process of the, um, creating the eighth edition and that out for consultation at the moment. So um, if you'd like to get feedback on those standards, that'd be really, really welcome. Um, and as I said, we'll be making the workbooks more user-friendly and also we're reviewing the structure of the peer review days to, to try and enable that learning. Um, we'll also be streamlining and simplifying the accreditation process so that it is less um, time consuming for communities, but to ensure that we don't lose the robust nature of the accreditation process in, in that. Um, and we're also creating a service user reference group. So if anyone would like to get involved with that, we would really like to um, develop how uh, we work with service users in C of C and um, would like to have more people on the advisory board and on the accreditation panel. Um, and so I think Neelam's here, isn't she? She's involved, yeah. So <laughs> if anyone wants to speak to her about getting involved, she's going to be um, helping us with that. Um, and we, the final thing we're going to be rolling out this year is something which I think a lot of the children and young people's communities have been calling out for, really. It's to, during the self-review process to have um, a way of gathering information from children and young people which doesn't involve reading the standards to them and, and trying to interpret them. So with the help of a developer, we've created an interactive story um, online which children can go through and then submit their answers um, to some questions which are related to the standards. So this should hopefully help children gather information from children and young people in a much more interactive way. 
So we've piloted that um, just over the last couple of weeks, and so we'll hopefully be rolling that out with this, this cycle. So um, I'll hand over now. I think Chris has just arrived. Yeah.